Okay, so now that we know a little bit about what different colors mean and what emotions they're tied to, we'll now be talking about color palettes and hex codes in different colors um, and how they play together in forming a brand's color scheme. So brand recognition is such a huge part of marketing and colors can be a really important part of that. So you'd imagine if, you know, Facebook decided to just go purple one day or Coca-Cola just went green, you know, you, we've got these different associations with particular brands for a particular reason because they use the same color schemes over and over and over again. So we learn to associate those colors with their brand and their logo and everything else. I mean, McDonald's, like the first thing you think of when you think of McDonald's is the golden arches. And it would be super weird if they randomly just stopped using the color yellow and their signature red, right? So color schemes are such an important part of branding. That's one side of it. The other side is that I would encourage you not to stick with a color palette or a brand color scheme just for the sake of sticking with it and then for the sake of branding, it's totally okay to evolve. My own brand colors have massively evolved over the years as I felt my own brand has evolved. I've changed my colors slightly. So it's entirely possible. If you look at some even big brands like Starbucks and Airbnb have totally different color schemes from when they first started. So it's okay to change, but I would say not too frequently <laughs> because then people will never really recognize that it's you coming across their social media feed if you don't have that sort of consistency going on. So play around with things, but I would say that at some point it's good to just go, this is my color scheme. These are the colors I'm going to use in my marketing materials over and over and over again. And these are the ones I'm sticking to until it no longer makes sense for these to be my brand colors. So if your clients, if you're doing this as a social media manager and if your clients don't have a color scheme in place, you can use the tips within this lesson to help them create one. And now you'll know why it's such an important thing for them to actually have their own brand colors and have them be really consistent in their designs on social media as well. All right, let's get into it. So let's start with imagecolorpicker.com and I'm going to scroll past all these crazy ads. I'm doing some home renovating, so clearly it's advertising to me. And I just want you to be aware of this site because a lot of the time I'll have students who have received some assets from their clients, but they haven't received the actual brand colors. So they might have their logos and things like that, but they don't have this actual number to use in their future designs inside of Canva, or they just want to play around with a few things. So this is a really great resource for that because you can just come in here and upload any sort of image. So I've just uploaded this one here because it's big and colorful, and then you you can basically hover over any part of the image and select any color that appears in the image and it's going to tell you what the hex code is. So that's this, you know, six digit combination of letters and numbers that you can then pop into Canva and use this exact color in your designs. And then you can also play around with some of the palettes down here, but I don't think the image color picker is the best tool for color palette selection. Also because I would argue that this is too many colors to have inside of your palette. So we're going to be using a different tool for that. So coolers.co and again I do have all of this linked within your course guide so if you're scrambling to write stuff down please don't it's all inside of your course guide so you'll be able to have all of your links there make sure to download it there but this is really really handy when you first go to the site if you haven't been to it before what it's going to do is actually going to take you through the site sort of walk through and tell you exactly what you can expect from the tool but then you're going to go to start the generator and then there are just a few things that I want to point out to you and then go ahead and play around with a few things you can do similarly what you did within image color picker you can actually create a color palette from an image so if I was to upload the exact same image it's going to allow me to do something similar but it doesn't actually give me the hex codes here I would have to actually create my color scheme out of it to see the hex codes over here but I can do something similar where I go okay I'm going to create my color scheme out of this photograph I mean, this would be a really, really hectic, not so complimentary color scheme. But then I could say, yep, that's pretty good. And then I could say view the palette or open in the generator. And it's already pulled those colors in for me. But the magic of coolers is the fact that if you just hit the space bar, it's going to give you different color palettes. 
So you can keep cycling through as many color palettes as you want. And every single time you find a color that you really like. So let's say I really like this yellow green Crayola for whatever reason. Um, what I would probably do is drag it over here because I'm happy with that one. And then I would lock that. And now when I hit the space bar, it's going to basically keep this in place, but give me some other options that work well with this particular color. So that is really, really handy. And if I find a color that I almost like, but not quite, then I've got some options in here where I can go, all right, maybe I like this one, but I want to go just a little bit lighter. Or I can also just manually input my hex codes over here. Um, I can play around with, you know, adjusting my color palette in terms of hue, in terms of saturation. So I can actually make adjustments to the entire cal color palette. Same with brightness. So if I was going for like these colors but in a really pastel format something a little bit you know more kind of subtle or maybe a little bit on the cooler side or the warmer side depending on what my brand is this is a really really handy way to do that so definitely play around with it and every time you find a color that you like just lock it and then you can keep playing around with more colors if you are signed into coolers you can actually just save your color palettes every time you find one you can just save it or if you don't want to sign up for um, an account with them you can just export it as an image or as a pdf um, those are probably the only ones that are going to be relevant to you guys you probably don't need the actual codes and then you just you know da -da -da. I don't think we need the colors to be labeled. We want a hex code color space because we're going to be designing this for uh, use inside of our digital graphics inside of Canva. And then when it exports, it'll look like this, which is really, really cool because you can then save that and send it to your clients. And then you have all the hex codes here that you can pop inside of Canva, which is awesome. So Canva do also have their own version of this at canva.com forward slash colors. And again, I'll include a link to this, but you have to remember that Canva do like a million things with their software. So this is not the only thing that they do. Whereas coolers, that is the only thing that they do and they do it really, really well. So Canva is a little bit limited with their functionality, but it can be a really good idea to jump in here and learn more about the color meanings and color theory as well. So if you're not sure which colors go really well together and you know that you want to go for like a turquoisey kind of color as your main color, you can jump in here and say, uh, I want to find complementary colors. And then it's going to tell you, all right, so this is, these guys are opposite on the color wheel. So they're actually going to work really well together in contrast. And then you can use this color combination to export a palette or start playing around with it. And again, you've got your hex codes here. So if you find anything in here that you like, you can pop it into coolers and keep playing around with it. So that's just another resource for you. But honestly, I think if you can get the hang of coolers and find your ideal color palette in here, because it's also got five colors which I think is kind of that sweet spot even though you can now add more I would say that this is a really really great place to start because you don't want to have eight different brand colors because then your brand is no longer going to be recognized for a particular color because you have so many so five is a really really good amount and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that once we get into constructing your brand kit inside of Canva so hopefully you're starting to see how your design work is starting to take shape. And in a little bit, we are going to talk about fonts and font pairings that you can use for your brand. But for now, let's chat about something that we all need to be across a little bit as content creators, which is understanding different content licenses. So more on that in the next lesson, and I'll see you there.